I'm so pissed off. I was coming the 401, a guy caught me up. I was just on my vacation, in the camping trip, and the guy cuts me off. What a day to start the day, eh? What a way to start the day. He just, I mean, he, I don't know if he wasn't looking or what, but it really ruined my vacation. Dear Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and of course, no guests. When I was coming here, someone really cut me off. I mean, I was driving the 401. Every day someone's gonna cut you off. It's impossible to drive the 401 with someone cutting you off. And it really made me angry. But I'm not angry anymore, and it did not ruin my vacation. The anger lasted for as long as it was useful to me. And here, I mean useful from the evolutionary and biological way, from the instinctive way. We get angry because we get attacked. We feel a threat, so we get ready to attack back. But once the threat is gone, so is the anger. But how many people do you know that do not control their emotions? Just let them run widely. They don't understand the source. Have it ever happened to you that you wake up in the morning, something with good reason makes you angry, but then you go for the rest of your day angry, angry at anything and everything. In the end, you got to bed not even remembering why you were angry in the first place, but you are still angry, and rightfully angry. And here, I am referring to anger. But I could refer to other emotions, such as sadness. Yes, they have a purpose. As I said, anger to get us ready for the fight. Sadness to get us ready for reflection. After a loss or a failure. So I'm not here advocating to suppressing emotions. That would be really unnatural and unhealthy. I'm instead inviting you to take ownership of your own feelings. It's quite easy to go around blaming other things or other people about our emotions. Blaming it, in, it into others is very easy. It just removes the responsibility that we have. The bottom line is we are the only person responsible for our emotions. We are all the only factor that we can control. So, and here you can repeat after me. I am the only person I can control. My actions. I am the only person that I can control. I am the only person I can control. My actions and my emotions. My actions and my emotions. That's so brave. I've reflected on this since my early teens. When I decided to stop letting everything affect me to stop letting my emotions run my life. <clears throat> At that time, I felt that the world was against me. Everything that happened was targeted towards me. Nobody could do anything <clears throat> without me not being the target. It felt as, it was, it, as if I was carrying the world on my young shoulders. To give you an idea of my mood at the time, 13, 15, this was my favorite book. Herman Hess, Beneath the Wheel, where a young boy felt completely responsible and completely overwhelmed about so much responsibility vested upon himself. Thankfully, I did not feel it felt beneath the wheel. I used that sadness and reflection to analyze my emotions. I saw myself mirror on that young boy and came out with a, with a way to channel those emotions properly. Here is my young self talking. A little self comes out. Every time that you feel an emotion, especially a strong emotion, stop and think, why am I feeling this emotion? Is it useful to feel this emotion? It's always right to feel that emotion because you are feeling it. But what damage is it causing you? If you find that the emotion has a reason, 
then channel it. Focus it. If it's sadness, reflect on what's making you sad. If it's anger, focus it against the, the actual threat. But if you find that the threat is gone, that the anger or the emotions or the sadness is no longer useful, just replace it for a good, by using a good thought. Go to your mythical, happy place. I've been doing that for three years, and believe me, it works. And if you do it, at the end of the day, you will realize that you become the master of your own domain.